Greetings, this is Jared Love, and in this video I wanted to go over this simple face rig system that I developed while I was at Turn 10 Studios. Now, I call it simple because it was just skin clusters and joints, so there's no other deformers involved. And there's a four influence per vertex limitation for the game engine as well. So I had to put in some of these in-between joints that have a, a more broad fall off, but they're controlled by specific key controls. So when you move the controls that don't actually affect them, it, it's going to look a little weird, uh, especially when one control has such a broad area of influence. But when you move them all together, kind of in unison, you don't actually notice these strange <laughs> behaviors. Uh, but that was just something to help liven up the face and create these... Uh, these more broad fall offs for, for certain things that in concert together, it helps it feel more alive. So one of the things I put in here is this uh, eyelid follow system. So as the eyeball moves around, you can uh, kind of tweak these multiplier values for how far the eyelids move with it vertically and horizontally. And it's also split up for upper and lower lid. So the animator can tweak that if the eyelids are following a little bit too much or, or whatever. And there's also this eyelid blink system. So you can take the value into the negative to kind of widen the eye or uh, push past 10 to uh, help with that eyelid seal. And the blink line attribute basically just tells um, at 10, it's gonna make the lids come together at the upper lid position and at zero at the lower lid position. So it doesn't really matter what the eyelid is posed and shaped like. So here you, you see moving these eyelid <laughs> controls into a very strange position. Obviously you wouldn't pose the eyelid like this, but it's just to show that it actually doesn't matter what your eyelid is currently posed as. The blink is going to bring that eyelid together. And so this is better for animators too in a way where they don't have to zero out a bunch of controls and then use this additional blink attribute to get the eyelid to blink and then put all those values back. They can basically pose the upper and lower eyelids however they want. And then, you know, as they blink, it's going to bring those eyelids together and they can tweak the line where the, uh, the lids blink together by adjusting that blink line attribute. And so here's also showing that, uh, the eyelid follow and the blink are kind of built in together with all the eyelid control. So it's a, it's a whole system for the eyelid that um, it doesn't matter how the lid's shaped, it's going to make those eyelids blink. Now here the, uh, the nose joint is actually in the tip of the nose, but the pivot for the control is kind of where that cartilage uh, starts in the nose. And you can also kind of grab these nostrils and, and scale them up and, and flare them. And then there's a, a nose follow system to where the nose can be modified to follow the, the mouth around or, or not. Uh, just depends on what the animator wants. But by tweaking these uh, follow attributes, you can kind of get a bit more of a natural feel for how much that nose is going to move with the mouth. It's actually driven by the center upper lip control, so wherever that goes, it's going to kind of aim the nose towards it. And so there's there's one for going side to side, one for you know, in and out, and uh, one for up and down. Now there's also this lip rolling system that uh, as the lip joints rotate forward and backwards, they also kind of uh, translate forward or backwards a little bit as well. 
and that's for helping with uh, like pucker shapes and stuff like that. So it kind of uh, rolls the the meat of the lip uh, forward and backwards. And there's a press control to kind of give this pressed tension on the lips, and it works in unison with the roll. So as the the lips are rolling, the press doesn't happen in the uh, the vector that the lips are currently pointing at. It's still going to work in the uh, vertical space of the face. So it's going to kind of press those together. And that's to help get any kind of lip puckering and, and pressing uh, combination that's needed. And then there's also some volume so you can kind of inflate the, the lips as well. And each of these is also manipulatable on the individual lip controls as well. It's a fully scripted system and the eyelids and the mouth, you can uh, adjust how many joints are in that system. So it should still build properly. One control per span is actually going to give you a, a better uh, fall off and better shape. And then I've got these mouth pin and chew attributes on the jaw that basically determine how the lip joints are going to behave with the jaw as it opens and like how much they follow with it. Uh, so it's to help the animator with posing the lips by not having to move the lip controls for every shape as the, the mouth is opening and closing. Now another benefit for it is if you uh, have the mouth corners, say, and you, you create some sort of smile shape or something, with the mouth closed at, at, you know, at a 10 value, it, it should look nice. But then as soon as you open the mouth, the corners drop down and you have to crank those mouth corner controls up higher. So you may end up having to give those a translate Y value of like 20 or 30 or something like that. But with a combination of the pin and the mouth corner controls, you can uh, have a, a lower value that's gonna be a more suitable range if you are to put in some sort of corrective blend system into it. So that way the, the blend shape isn't getting activated 200, 300, 400% beyond uh, its kind of max value. Just another quick little note, the controls on the left and right hand side of the face have uh, right-handed and left-handed matrices, so they behave in a mirrored fashion across the YZ plane, and that works for translation as well as rotations. And then also, like with this uh, cheek control, you can kind of scale it uh, a bit to give you a bit of a cheek puff kind of a thing. So it was really about optimizing and getting as much functionality out of each joint as possible. And then this is an application of a movable pivot in the palette controls so you can kind of tweak where the palette controls rotate from as needed for the shot. But uh, yeah, it was a really fun project, and uh, I think it turned out pretty well for as uh, simple of a rig as, well, okay, I put some cool stuff in it. I tried to cram in as much as I could, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it was fun. I hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching, and have a blessed day.